is quite apt and that it has been done by the US ambassador. Uh, not because he is a world citizen, so he, um, he is a US citizen, but uh, we treat him as a world citizen and that you come here um, at the failure of the day. It is a hard day today. Um, it is a tribute that you pay to the work of Mr. Dr. Anderson. We are proven, sir, and we are looking forward to another visit which will be as fruitful as this visit has been. Thank you. I take this opportunity now to invite Shri Rashmi Khan Dulabji, the trustee of Harvey Dulabji Trust, about the... Here, Ashok has been, because there were six brothers and one of them could be devoted to <laughs> this. I only one son and if I gave him the social work, I should be hard to shake him. I was taking the clue from my Fasab's this thing. You see, those whom we love, they never pass away. If this institution is in the memory of Baba Dayanji, and the Lord is the exhibit for him, this is a living tribute to him. And although he was not there to see, but every time, every student, every best that goes through this institution, it's a, it's a in love and memory to the person, the person who inspired the whole thing. And we all are indebted that he brainwashed Ashok to start this sort of a charitable work of this institution. And may the departed soul rest in peace. It is asked why people in the industry going for social work or especially in the health management. If you see the large, big established industries, I'll give you the prime example of uh, Tata Iron and Steel work at Jamsetpur. They were one of the finest health management programs for their employees. But whatever they invested in the health management, they reaped more than enough in the welfare of their employees, their families. Because it has been known and seen that anybody, even small, a small sickness in the family, it affects the work, the work of the employee. The industrialist, the entrepreneur, have sort of a rate, a benefit far in excess of what they have invested. But that is one side of the thing. In our country, we have many examples of where people have donated large sums of money, where the name of XYZ is associated with the hospital, uh, uh, Dhamsala or something. I don't consider those as uh, living institutions. I consider those as mausoleums because once the name is given, the donor doesn't bother about it, it is left to some other trust or the state government to look after it. And we have enough examples of institutions like this where the only thing that can be associated with the donor or a major donor is the name and nothing else with it. If one has to be a part to keep the institution alive, the family or the individuals that are contributed to it should be actively associated with it. Not only in the day-to-day -day management, but to make a perspective planning. And until and unless that is there, it becomes a stagnant institution. That is why in 11 years you see this institution so actively coming up because Ashok and his family are totally involved in it. I will give an example that the Varuka Blood Bank in Calcutta has been a sort of an inspiration for us and we have requested the state government to give us a piece of land using that bank as an idea, blood bank as an idea to establish one for the state of Rajasthan. And to that extent I am indebted to Ashok and IISMR for the help and the cooperation they have given us in setting up this blood bank project. I am sure we all want to listen to the ambassador but once again, I try to remind Ashok that although Bhavadayalji is not here, this is a dedication to his memory and we love him for it. Thank you very much. Dr. Agarwal, <coughs> Chief Secretary, Mr. Dilavji, ladies and gentlemen, 
it's a tremendous treat and a great privilege and a pleasure for me to be able to join you this afternoon at the Institute, to be able to visit it, to be able to meet you, to be able to hear of the great work that all of you are doing. I was enormously touched throughout the course of my brief visit here by many things that have happened. Dr. Agarwal's careful description of the work of the Institute in the many different fields that you've chosen. The privilege you've given me in letting me be part of the ceremonial celebration of the inauguration of your library in the name of Dr. Henderson in his memory. One could barely think of a finer tribute to an individual than to have books of learning and knowledge dedicated in that individual's name. And I could just feel the pleasure on his behalf when he looks at that lovely brass plaque and recognizes that his contributions to this institute, to your work, have been remembered by you in such a touching and gracious manner. And I will, with John Rogosh, think of a way to get word to him and to be able to share some of the sentiment that flowed this afternoon. It's been a privilege as well to share another sentiment and the sentiment of service. My own life is different from all of yours in the ways that our lives differ individually. My father, when I was a child, turned to me and said that my grandfather had been fortunate, he'd been fortunate, and that it was time for me to continue in a tradition of public service, as he had chosen a career of public service. And amongst my four brothers, I was the one who ended up carrying out the responsibility of public service. Um, like you and like Mr. Dulabji, and like each one of you here this afternoon, there are moments when we remember what tremendous people we've all been issued from and set a standard in our lives and have led us and have made us, as this institute makes it clear this afternoon, the possibility of multiplying an example that was given to us that we treasure. In my father's case, his own <coughs> contributions will never go recognized as his chosen field of public service was secret intelligence. Uh, <laughs> something that one does not normally celebrate in large institutes inside the United States government as well as his own family. It is a particular pleasure, therefore, to watch you, Dr. Agarwal, and your family carry on a tradition that all of us can feel at one way and to have had you do it with such modesty and such grace, I can only tell you that I shall long remember this afternoon and not only what you do in the field of public health, but the spirit that lies behind that contribution. This great institute is a pioneering example of private sector initiative in higher education and training <coughs> in India, and it's an excellent example of support for social development by the business sector. We also, all of us as Americans, congratulate you for your joint masters in public health degree for whatever bond of sympathy and sentiment with you as you are able to carry forth the good work of Chapel Hill. Major shifts are occurring throughout India today, particularly in the Indian economy and in India's health and education sectors. The private sector has an excellent opportunity to grow and to participate in the overall betterment of India. With over 70% of health care in India provided by the private sector, it's really very, very important that attention be paid to the systems of quality assurance that will ensure that patients receive the best possible standards of health care. And so I hope that this great institute will widen its current focus on improving public health systems to including private sector systems as well 
for it truly is the challenge of the future. India is challenged by many problems. Among those is the problem of making health care accessible to its many millions living in unserved areas of the country, both in urban and in rural areas. The public sector, with its limited resources, can't reach. Everybody can't reach all of India's millions, and it is, and therefore falls to, the non-governmental sector, to voluntary organizations that are motivated to serve these people, to reach out and carry care forward. However, these are often small organizations. I've seen many of them in India. Small organizations that need support and strengthening and professionalization. It is encouraging to note that this institute is engaged in capacity building for such non-governmental organizations. And our own United States assistance mission in India has been pleased to collaborate with your institute in such an important adventure. Since both the government of India and international donors recognize the key role of non-governmental organizations are slated to play in health and social development in the coming years, this institute's capability to provide technical support and training to NGOs is certain to be much in demand. I really see today an extraordinary moment of partnership and opportunity. I was able, as Chief Secretary Mehta mentioned to all of you, to lead today to Jaipur representatives of a number of major American corporations. I was asked by the newspapers whether changes in government in Delhi would mean that American enterprise would think twice <coughs> about coming to India or think about pulling up stakes and going home, as the winds of political change carry with them an unknown of uncertainty. And I answered that most Americans who have come to India today didn't come easily and they won't leave easily. They came, with, they came after thinking very carefully about their commitment. And their commitment is for decades ahead. These very corporations have had instilled in their very beings a sense that corporate life carries with it responsibilities, the same spirit that underlies the commitment of the Agrawal family. That indeed corporations owe back to the publics they live with a debt, a debt of responsibility and service. So foreigners not just Indians who have the privilege of working in this country, not just Indian enterprise, but Indian NGOs, all have a moment in which government steps back a bit and opens the field of service and public health and allows others to step in and fill it. But that step will not be taken if there is not an organizing genius, if there is not a capability to think through the consequences and to produce the capacities. That's what this institute can be about, it is about, and I wish you, Dr. Agarwal, to those who support you, like the Chief Secretary, like Mr. Raji, and like all of you who sit in this audience today, my very best wishes. I would like to exchange the momentum to Dr. Ashok Agarwal. Mr. Agarwal, I have the pleasure of bringing you this this book. It's just out, and it talks about many of the subjects that have challenged you in your life. And your it's a pleasure, and to be my pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you.
So just the littles are in the concrete slab. Thank you.